At one point in time, the world seemed obsessed with World War II related media. Moviegoers had Saving Private Ryan, TV fans could watch Band of Brothers, and even video game lovers could jump into a game of Medal of Honor and experience World War II, or at least a fast-paced version of it for themselves. Games themselves had covered the war with either a view to create a new blockbuster, Medal of Honor or The Rise of Call of Duty, or create their own unique spin on it with Wolfenstein, but none of them tried to emulate the gritty realism of it all. Enter Brothers in Arms. Developed by Gearbox Software, the Brothers in Arms series took a more realistic approach to recreating World War II, often putting you in command of your own squad of infantry, forced to find ways to outthink and overcome enemy fortifications. While it might not have achieved the same level of success as Call of Duty, the series managed to cultivate a following that's loyal to this day. So today we're asking the question, will we ever see a new Brothers in Arms game? Before then though, Brothers, let me tell you something, brother. Brother, slap the like button. Slap the, slap, slap the like and subscribe, Brother Bear. Please, we just, we just want 10,000 subs and we will stop when we hit that. You never, ever have to see me again. So, when did Brothers in Arms begin, and why is it such a big deal? The series began in March 2005 with Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30 for PS2 and the original Xbox, which was developed by Gearbox Software and published by Ubisoft. The game is based loosely on the real-life exploits of the 502nd Parachute Infantry Regiment of the 101st Airborne Division, who were dropped behind German lines hours before D-Day as part of Mission Albany. As Sergeant Matt Baker, you lead a squad of soldiers around Normandy, culminating in the Battle of Bloody Gulch around Manoir de Donville, the eponymous Hill 30. Before release, Gearbox's president Randy Pitchford described it as probably the best game he's ever worked on in an interview with GameSpot. He'd go on to talk about how the game's development was informed by the research conducted by speaking to veterans who'd lived through World War II, sneaking in a sly dig at Call of Duty and Medal of Honor in the process. There's a real brotherhood between soldiers, and Brother in Arms captures that like no other war game before it. Other games tend to emphasise duty and honour, and those are important concepts, but when you really spend time with the veterans who are in the thick of it and you talk to them about what mattered, they tend to come back to the same kinds of sentiments about how important it was for them to have respect of the guy next to them to not let them down. That concept of brotherhood became a really consistent and important theme as we became immersed in this stuff. That research came in the form of retired US Army Colonel John Antle and was described as instrumental in designing the gameplay that came to define the Brothers in Arms series. Compared to other war shooters of that era, Brothers in Arms was a lot more cerebral in its approach, utilising fire and move tactics instead of just running and gunning. Players could command fire teams to suppress and flank enemies, allowing you greater control over the battlefield than other shooters at that time. Critics seem to agree that the fresh approach to World War II shooters was a successful one, with the game earning mid to high 80s on Metacritic. Commercially, the game managed to do incredibly well, with Road to Hill 30 accruing 1.7 million units sold by the end of March 2005. Intriguingly though, before Brothers in Arms Road to Hill 30 had even launched worldwide, it would appear that a sequel was already in the works. In that same interview with GameSpot, Pitchford offered a tease into the future of Brothers in Arms, stating, Brothers in Arms is definitely a long-term commitment from Gearbox and Ubisoft. I'm really excited about the future of these characters, and we have some amazing surprises for fans soon. E3 2005 will be a very good time to look for more about Brothers in Arms. Sure enough, at E3 that year, Gearbox announced Brothers in Arms earned in blood. What shocked people the most is that Gearbox and Ubisoft would then go on to launch Earned in Blood later that year, with a full release in October of 2005. The game was developed with the same engine and core gameplay as the first, only with improvements to the enemy AI and level design, but ostensibly it was the same core game with a new campaign and fresher coat of paint. Reviewers at the time picked up on the fact that Earned in Blood wasn't exactly a full sequel, despite being marketed as such with a full price to boot. Earned in Blood was still heaped with praise, though reviews noted that it wasn't a revelation. From there, it was clear that Brothers in Arms had become a key franchise for Ubisoft and Gearbox, with D-Day launching for the PSP in 2006 and Brothers in Arms DS in 2007, which was then ported to iOS in 2008 by Gameloft as Hour of Heroes and to the N-Gage, remember the freaking N-Gage, N-Gage gang rise up, as simply Brothers in Arms. Ports and mobile games were a key focus for Brothers in Arms, particularly the latter, with Double Time being a Wii port of the first two games, also launching in 2008, while four mobile games, including Hour of Heroes, dropped between 2008 and 2014. 
The last Major Brothers in Arms release was Hell's Highway, which launched in 2008 on PC, PS3 and Xbox 360, which once again saw players return to the boots of Baker as he formed part of Operation Market Garden during 1944. The third proper game in the series attempted to refine the formula, with Pitchford remarking in a 2008 interview with Eurogamer that Hell's Highway featured improvements to weapon accuracy, vaulting over cover, the tactical map, and the game's overall accessibility. Unfortunately, of the three main games, Hell's Highway is the worst reviewed of the entire series, averaging in the high 70s on Metacritic. By no means does that make Brothers in Arms Hell's Highway a bad game, as many still loved its take on tactical shooting and World War II storytelling, but it's still a noticeable dip from the reception to the mainline series of games, and could go some way to explaining why we haven't seen a new game in the series since. After Brothers of Arms 3, Sons of War in 2014, one of the previously mentioned mobile games developed in collaboration with Gameloft, the Brothers in Arms series hasn't seen a proper release since, but that doesn't mean Gearbox wanted to leave the series in the dust. In fact, during E3 2011, a new Brothers in Arms game was announced, Furious 4, that looks set to be a grand departure from the historical accuracy the series had become known for. Furious 4 would have been a four-player co-op game that would have seen a diverse cast of characters cut a bloody sway through Nazi Germany in an attempt to bring down Hitler themselves. Upon its reveal, Furious 4 drew comparisons to the Quentin Tarantino film Inglorious Bastards, with gameplay that was described as more like Bulletstorm than anything resembling a strategic military shooter. While that does sound like a cool premise in and of itself, it wasn't in the spirit of a Brothers in Arms game and the fans recognised that. With that in mind, Pitchford announced at PAX Prime in 2012 that Furious 4 was being turned into its own IP. They, Gearbox, kind of started to go in a place that started to get a little way from what the core of what the Brothers in Arms brand is all about. It needed to be unshackled. That new IP would go on to become Battleborn. Yes, Battleborn, the game that was publicly assaulted for about six years, whose colossal failure could be its own video. Want to see that? Let us know down below, and also lie about how much you enjoyed it while you're there. Despite the game series being dormant though, Gearbox are still making use of the franchise and license. In 2020, it was announced that a TV series using the Brothers in Arms license is in the works, with TV veteran Scott Rosenbaum as showrunner, while Pitchford himself is serving as a producer. The first season will reportedly focus on Exercise Tiger, a disastrous moment during World War II that was designed to rehearse the landing at Normandy. Unfortunately, poor communication during Exercise Tiger led to a friendly fire incident, while a day afterwards, a convoy was attacked by German e-boats outside of Lime Bay. Between the two instances, it's estimated that up to 1,200 Allied soldiers lost their lives during Exercise Tiger, with survivors sworn to secrecy in an attempt to prevent leaks ahead of the real invasion and to avoid the embarrassment that came from the whole debacle. Honestly, it sounds like it would make for a fantastic TV series. So that's the past of the series sorted, but does the future of Brother in Arms suggest a new game? Well, if Randy Pitchford has anything to say about it, probably, yeah. From his comments shared earlier for the first Brothers in Arms game to the fact that he's overseeing a TV series based on the show 15 years later, it's proof that the series still means a lot to him. If Pitchford had his way, we probably would have had a new game in the series already, but alas, it hasn't come to pass just yet. Speaking to IGN at Develop Brighton in 2015, Pitchford did confirm that Gearbox were working on a new game. I feel like I'm on the brink of it, but we're not quite there yet. Once it happens, development will really take off, and then sometime after that, if we don't completely kill ourselves, we'll announce. But we're in the incubation phase with the next one there, for sure. Randy Pitchford also mentions that there are some challenges that have to come with its development. I think the next Brothers in Arms game has to be authentic and we have been working on that. I feel we have unfinished business there with both the fiction and the history and I'd like to get into that. I spend a lot of time thinking about it. Sadly, it takes a lot of resources, energy and money to do what must be done, so it's not something I feel I could completely do alone. I need good partners for it, so we've been talking to great folks, but it's really putting all of that together that's the limiting factor. Once we put all the partnerships together in terms of publishing, collaborators and creatives, we can talk about it. Six years later, Pitchford confirmed once again to a fan on Twitter in 2021 that Gearbox are still working on a new Brothers in Arms game, but they're not at a stage where they feel comfortable revealing anything. 
That said, the game might have leaked already with a user on 4chan, so I'm taking a massive pinch of salt with this one, alleging that a new game in the series would launch in 2021 and would be set in the Battle of the Bulge. The leak also notes that development on the game was hell due to Gearbox focusing on the development of Borderlands 3. Whether or not the leak is genuine remains to be seen, but it does corroborate some conclusions reached by a fantastic Reddit post from the user Phoenix400. Without going into too much detail, the post chronicles how Randy almost stopped acknowledging the series entirely around the time Borderlands 3 was announced, along with some of the details that have emerged about the upcoming game from interviews, leaks and more. Now that Gearbox has launched Borderlands 3 and development on that game is focused on DLC, which isn't as intensive as developing a full game, perhaps now is the time to shine for the Brothers in Arms series, especially if it can coincide with the launch of the TV series. Unlike most games that we feature in these retrospective articles, the idea of a new Brothers in Arms game is pretty likely indeed. So there you have it, that is the past and future of Brothers in Arms. So let us know down in the comments, had you played any of the Brothers in Arms games? Are you a fan of the series? Will you be watching the new TV series? Would you like to see a fourth game? Let us know down below, we always love to hear from you. Again, if you brothers and sisters did enjoy the video, please consider liking it, subscribing to the channel for more content as we race towards that 10k goal and hitting the notification bell so you don't miss anything more in your inbox. We need all the views we can get, please, because we're quite sad about the algorithm. Please also check us out on the social medias on screen as well, including Twitter and the website, culturedvultures.com. It really helps us out as a brand in general. And hopefully, between all of this, we'll see you in the next one. But until then, until then, cocoon.